I have a lot of schmoozing in my hand today. Where the heck did this virus come from? Mm-hmm. Yo Yo believes it came from the Wuhan lab. I kind of think so too. Although most scientists, Vanessa is on the fence. She has not come out and said where she believes the virus came from. Most scientists are saying it happened naturally, which is why you hear them always say the wild COVID that came from the wild and then the mutated viruses all have different letters and numbers next to it. But yesterday, President Joe Biden said he has directed the U.S. intelligence community to redouble their efforts to investigate the origins of the COVID pandemic. The announcement coming after the United States intelligence report found several researchers at China's Wuhan Institute fell sick in November of 2019. Oh, see. Da, 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 da. Mm. How, oh. why did they get sick in 2019 and get transported to a hospital? Hmm. 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 Huh. Now, Biden said in his statement in March, he directed his national security advisor, Jake Sullivan, to task the intelligence community with preparing a report on the most up-to-date analysis of the origins of the COVID pandemic. There are two likely scenarios. One is it jumped from a bat. The other one is it was either negligently or intentionally released by the Wuhan lab. Now, uh, while cautioning, there is no conclusions yet, by the way. So nobody has come out publicly and said, at least from the United States, where it came from. The president said that one element of the U.S. intelligence community leans toward the possibility that the virus escaped from a bat, while others are saying it escaped from a lab. Now, the Chinese government They're saying it came from a bat. The World Health Organization investigated with the Chinese government. Now, we don't know what information the Chinese government gave the World Health Organization, what information was withheld. They claim it also came from a bat. Now, there is a compelling interest. I mean, we're we're joking around a little bit. But there is a major compelling interest to determine where this came from. There's an interest in preventing something like this happening in the future. We want to know if there was any criminal or activity involving this COVID release or if it came from a bat. There is clear public pressure on Joe Biden's administration right now to address this issue, especially after The Wall Street Journal reported that underscored the plausibility of the Wuhan lab theory, as well as new comments by Dr. Anthony Fauci, who acknowledged it's possible it came from the Wuhan lab. Now, Dr. Fauci, I'm going to quote him. He said, many of us feel that it is more likely that this is a natural occurrence where it goes from an animal reservoir to a human. But we don't know 100 percent the answer to that. Fauci said that it's also imperative to get to the bottom of this with more investigation. Now, an advisor for the World Health Organization, Jamie Metzl, said the lab leak theory is possible while scientists were, quote, poking and prodding and studying viruses with the good intention of developing vaccines. Pressure is also heightened on all of this. Because yesterday, Democrat Senator Patty Murray of Washington called for clear answers from the intelligence community on the origins of the coronavirus. And legislation backed by Republican Senators Josh Hawlam and Mike Braun of Indiana unanimously passed, requiring the Biden administration, specifically the director of the National Intelligence, to declassify any intelligence relating to links between the Wuhan Institute of Virology and the origins of the COVID pandemic. Now, Joe Biden said that he intends to release the results of this intelligence report 
within the next 90 days. Now, mm -hmm. if the United States leaves both the former Trump administration and the Biden White House calling for this transparency about their efforts to establish how the virus started, it turns out that if it did escape from the lab, you got to give a little applause to Trump because he would be vindicated a little bit because that's what he's been saying the whole time. Now, Trump was saying that before anybody else was saying it, but also he may have been privy to intelligence reports that others didn't see. Now, the Trump administration, it was facing election year blame for COVID going rampant throughout the United States. So they were looking to blame somebody else, which is why people really were discounting what Trump was saying with the Wuhan lab. So let's not forget also that the Trump administration cut two thirds of key United States public health agencies budget operating inside of China to determine where this actually came from. So although Trump was saying it, you know, he didn't really have a lot of evidence to back it up. We're finally going to find out. Vanessa, you've been silent on this a long time. Going to put you on the spot. In 90 days from now, when Joe Biden released, and by the way, there's a lot of political consequences to this as well, in all seriousness. The United States, the United States and China are in an economic war right now. They're in a political war for supremacy of who's going to be the leader of the world. China is saying that their political system is better than democracy. They're in an autocratic system, a one party system. They have grown their economy much greater and much faster than the United States. There seems to be less, at least public civil discourse in China, although under the surface, we don't know what's going on. And they are boasting to many people in the world that the one party system, that autocratic system, is the better system than a free democracy. They mm -hmm. are promoting themselves as the future. The United States is saying, whoa, we've been around for 260 years. We've had our ups and downs. We are far from perfect but we are closer to perfect than anywhere else. Right. So there is also, so there is also a, you know, a political thing for supremacy of who is going to be running the world in 10, 20, 30 years from now. The United States would love to say to China, look what you did, you caused all of this misery. Dr. Paul Ofit, an infectious disease expert at the University of Pennsylvania, Perlman School of Medicine told CNN's Wolf Blitzer, he doesn't believe that the Wuhan lab had manipulated the virus to make it more contagious using this controversial gain of function research, meaning that they, what was going on in this Wuhan lab is that they were manipulating viruses to make them more lethal to figure out ostensibly how to treat them. The theory being that after they manipulated the virus to be more lethal, it somehow escaped. It's called the gain so of function now. virus. Now, Paul Ofit says, what I do know is they have to allow this investigation. This is now the third pandemic strain that has raised its head in the last 20 years. First, there was SARS, then there was MERS. So we can't assume that we are done with pandemics. There's going to be another one. I'm gonna put you on the spot, Vanessa, knowing everything you know about coronavirus, Dr. Vanessa. Does it come from a bat or does it come from a lab? Yo-Yo is on record saying lab. I am. I mean, I'm familiar with the fact, uh, until we started speaking about it recently, how that is something that they do in these labs where they are manipulating these viruses. After hearing that, I'm like, okay, um, that sounds like it makes a lot more sense than, I mean, I was also for the whole, it came from, you know, the, the, like the animals and whatever the case may be, but something tells me that science may be really where this was and what's going on in those labs. 
questionable. Hmm. 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 Meanwhile, according to data from the John Hopkins University, as reported more than 33 million COVID-19 cases and 592,000 deaths. Deaths have gone up 2,000 in the last 24 hours. Nearly 50% of people are vaccinated. 40% in the United States are fully vaccinated. 10 states, mostly in the Northeast, have now reached Biden's goal to vaccinate at least 70% of the adults. The cruise ship Celebrity Edge is poised to be the first major cruise ship to set sail from the United States in over a year. The ship part of the Celebrity Cruise Line owned by Royal Caribbean has been cleared to sail from Fort Lauderdale. Do you well, think that it went up? Do you think it went up because people aren't wearing masks as much now? Because at the gym, people don't wear masks now. They, I mean, you can, it's optional though. So people are walking around without masks. So I've seen, you know, certain places where uh, people have been taking advantage of not having to wear masks. Do you think that's why it's starting to go up? That what's going up, the deaths? I don't think deaths yeah. are going up. I just, it, I, I think it's more of a, a anomaly than anything. I mean, we've just been reading it um you know the last couple of, of days and it hasn't really because the last couple of times yeah yeah the last four days, it's only been like a thousand not even a thousand almost like yeah. right yeah so i i don't know it could be an anomaly i'm i'm not i'm not certain that deaths are going up they're certainly opening up the 50 percent of the people who are already vaccinated in the united states at least according to science are completely safe from death from COVID. Do it all happens. right all right, he's become known as Italy's Robinson Crusoe after spending more than 30 years as the only resident of an island off the coast of Sardinia. But Moro Mardini, Moradini is bidding farewell to his tiny hut on the Isle of Budelli after local authorities repeatedly threatened him with eviction. The 81-year-old has been living on this island since 1989. He announced his departure in a late April message on Facebook. He says, I'm going to leave. Budeli will be safeguarded as I've done for 32 years. He said that he's really pissed off about the situation. The former teacher ended up on the stunning Pink Island while attempting to sail from Italy to Polynesia. Well, what? if he ended up on this island, he didn't get too far from Italy because, you know, <laughs> what is that, a 10 minute sail ride from Sardinia to this little island, 20 minutes? How far can it be? He previously told how he was instantly mesmerized by the place and decided to stay. So taking over from the island's former caretaker a short time after arriving. However, the caretaker role became defunct when the La Maddalena's National Park took over ownership of Budeli Island in 2015. Morandini has since spent years fighting with officials to stay. He told CNN Travel in Italian last year, I'm ready to do all I can to stay here, even if that means they'll have to drag me away. Well, he is wow. finally, finally going. But I don't understand right his Gilligan's Island. Yeah, I don't understand his <laughs> sailing trip from from Italy to Polynesia if he ended up on an island off the coast of Italy. What, right. What a too far that he traveled, right? Staying in Italy, a Rome street artist by the name of Alessia Babro glued a stylized image of Christ she had made February nineteenth, twenty nineteen, onto a bridge near the Vatican. A year later, she was shocked to learn that the Vatican had apparently used a reproduction of the image, which featured Babrow's hallmark heart emblazoned across Christ's chest. Babrow sued the Vatican City State's telecommunications office in a Rome court last month, alleging it was wrongfully profiting off her creativity and violating the intent of her artwork. The lawsuit, which is seeking nearly 130,000 euros, which is approximately $160,000, said the Vatican never responded officially to Babro's attempts to negotiate a settlement. Babro told the Associated Press, I couldn't believe it. I honestly thought it was a joke. The Vatican is home to some of the greatest artworks ever made. It vigorously enforces its own copyright over everything from the Sistine Chapel to Michelangelo's Pieta. But now the Vatican stands accused of violating the intellectual property rights of a street artist. Oh. Uh, but you know what? She drew it on the street. It's public now i would think no that's all about to ask like yeah. what, what do you think because first of all did she she didn't even like draw the uh christ she just like pasted it on there right yeah well now copyright lawyers familiar with the case say it's an important benchmark for italy and evidence of the increasing appreciation for the banksy style street art they say it underscores that even anonymous graffiti art deserves protection 
Now, Massimo Sterpi, whose Rome law firm has represented Banksy's pest control agency <laughs> Look at this guy. in copyright cases, said intellectual property law in much of Europe and the United States protects artists' rights even if a piece was created on public land illegally. Now, the artwork in question is a 13-inch high printed picture of Christ styled on the famous work by the 19th century German painter Heinrich Hoffmann. On Christ's torso is Balbrow's telltale tag, an image of the human art. The work is part of Balbrow's Just Use It project. Now, lawyer, the, lawyer for, uh, the lawyer argued in the lawsuit that by appropriating the image to promote the Catholic Church, the Vatican irrevocably distorted Babro's message that there are no universal truths. Uh, wacky. I, I mean, I can understand why she'd be mad, though. I can understand why she'd be mad because, you know, I do art myself. And um, I say if I had painted something and didn't really copyright or just like painted something on, on a wall and to find out that people are benefiting and, you know, making a profit off of my art, I would be mad. Now, if it's like, a, if she has a case or, I don't know. But I'm saying I understand why she would be mad. I have no idea if she has a case. I know not the first thing about copyright law, to be honest with you. So exactly. My, so but you understand my, why she'd be mad though, right? I would understand why she would be mad, absolutely. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm here, for, I'm, I'm, I'm on her side for that. All right. You know, uh, that now, uh, a teenager in Thailand was happy to find an iPhone for a very extremely cheap price online, but his happiness quickly faded when he received his, its order. It turned out not to be an iPhone, but rather an iPhone-shaped coffee table. When he oh received the order, he knew something was wrong. He <laughs> thought he ordered an iPhone. He got an iPhone oh. coffee table. He that missed the product details before placing the order. The team later took the social media and posted pictures of his mistake. Let's see that picture one more time. That is hilarious. That's very funny. First of all, that's real trifling that a phone would be more than a whole table when a phone probably doesn't even take any any close to amount of that to uh, fix it, to make a phone. Like it's, phones are just so expensive for no reason. Why Why would anybody want a table phone? <laughs> right. I'm trying so to figure out. In the first place. Huh? A hospital worker in Italy's south was allegedly paid for 15 years without working a single day. The hospital <laughs> in Italy's southern region of Calabria fired Salvatore Scumacci for not showing up to work more than 15 years after he last showed up to work. Oh my the God. The 67 year old was fired last year from the Puglisi Siaco Hospital in the city of Cantanzaro. But the news made headlines in Italy this week when Italy's financial police announced their investigation. His case was uncovered as part of a wider investigation into absenteeism by public workers. Now, while Scumacci has not yet been arrested or formally charged, the police informed him that he could face charges. He's accused of earning approximately 538,000 euros or more than $645,000 for Damn. a job. Yo, yo. We got to move, brother. Italy. Yes. Italy, They're man. Not you can, you, nobody, realized, right. nobody realized he wasn't working for 15 years. They just kept sending and him just a check. Kept on paying? They kept paying him. So, <laughs> again, again, whose side are you going to be on? I'm going to be on his side. If they wasn't paying attention, they could just throw away money. I'm going to take it. <laughs> unless, I guess, unless it's a fraud. I mean, I'm just thinking here, you know, if you get paid. Oh, that is definitely. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if there was any work done by him whatsoever, he has a defense under labor law, at least certainly in the United States. Right. Yeah. All right. <laughs>